Bunbury Football Club. They were thrown out. They were thrown out. They were thrown out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dead and Bury. I'm your host, Captain Birdie Man FM, and I welcome you to this Football Manager Long Term Save where we take AFC Bury from the basement of football all the way very back to the Football League and beyond. Right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first opportunity that we've had to pick up some silverware as AFC Bury, the Phoenix Club, and I'm going to bring it to you live today. Let me just show you how we've been getting on since we were last together. If you're wondering what silverware it is, it is the league. Because things have been going rather swimmingly since last time we were together. So in the last episode we played Liverland and we won by two goals to nil. We followed that up with our first game back in the league in February against Paddingham. And we won by two goals to nil. A double from Dam Effenen and a goal from Ra- Rasmus Johansson got us the three points. And things were just getting better and better. And the team has really, really evolved into this 3-4-3 formation because we've stopped conceding goals and we're just scoring them for fun. And against Rylands, we did just that. 6-0, six of the best. Two from Park, one from Laird, Swanson, Rasmus Johansson and Dan Heffernan to finish off the route. We then went into the fifth round of the FA Vars where we played Bitten and we won by four goals to nil. As you can see, there is a theme here. We've stopped conceding goals. Robbie Laird, Gary McCabe, C. Van Eeld, Ease Banks, Blake can't get it out and then Lewis Thompson to finish off the route. Well, all things must come to an end, though, eh, ladies and gentlemen, because then we went and lost 2-1 to Runcorn Town. Yeah. After going, uh, well, not going 1-0, look, we went 1-0 down, brought it back and then they scored in the 95th minute to win the game. But seven days is a long time in football and you can turn things around very, very quickly. And it was a 4-1 victory over 1874 Northwich. Tom McKeown and then a hat-trick for Sylvan Ebanks-Blake. Lovely old stuff. And then we recorded our biggest win of the season, an 8-1 thrashing over Hanley. This is in the league, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a cup game. They are in the same league as us. McCabe with a double, Thompson with a hat-trick, McKeown with two and then Sam Brenner scored in the 90th minute as well. To make it eight of the best. And then it was an action-packed February really. And we finished it off with our quarter-final game against Chatham in the FA Vars. And we drew by 1-1. One One goals to one. Where Mikion got the goal after 10 minutes. And then we kind of went into our shell a little bit. They scored in the 87th minute by Freddie Yeo. Who seems to just ring a bell. I'm sure he wants to put a time play for someone like Lincoln. But we then followed that up with a 1-0 tight game against Chatham in the repeat leg. Well, not repeat leg, but in the repeat fixture, the replay, where we went to their place, went down south, got the victory, and we are now through to the semi-final of the FA Vars. And we are only one fixture away from Wembley. Tom McKeown getting the W for us in this game. And then we've just gone back to the league and we've won by four goals to one against bottom of the table, Whitchurch, where we won by four goals to one, like I just said. Cameron Park got a double, Sylvan Inbank Blake got on the score sheet and Tom McKeown. And there were only one thing that overshadowed everything. Ebanks Blake got injured in this game and he's out for quite a while. Yeah, three to six weeks, so he's going to be out for a good two months. And at 33, that could be that. It could be that. For old Sylvan Ebanks Blake. So we need to think of someone else to bring in. And I might just have a short term solution. 40 year old Rangers legend Kenny Miller. Yes, 69 caps for Scotland, 18 goals. A bona fide legend of Scottish football. And one that we could bring in a very short term notice. He was still playing in the Premier Division last season where he's got 8 goals for Dundee. He's 40 years old these days. So. We have to be a little bit, you know, we have to just see where this one goes. But once upon a time, cost Rangers £2 million. Pounds. We cost Wolves £3 million pounds once upon a time as well. And he has been a bona fide legend for the Scottish Premier Division and scored goals left, right and centre. We put a bid in for him. He's got to come for only four months. He might get fit. He might not. He might score. He might get the winner at Wembley. And we all will be merry. But this is how we look in the league anyway. As you can see now, we are 13 points clear at the top of the table. And today's episode, like I said in the intro, is a big one. Because if we get the win and Northwich Victoria lose their game, 
then we will be champions. If they win their game and we win, then it just goes on to next week. And then if we win that one, then we're champions. They're done and dusted. But in between this game and next week's game, we've got the FA Vars semi-final as well. So today's episode is going to be one game. Hopefully we can secure the title in this episode alone. If not, we'll come back for the semi-final and the next game. And we've got a second leg semi-final as well. So the next episode is going to be a triple edda if we do not get the victory here today and win the title right here right now all sorted are you ready let's go right here we go it is game time we are played long ridge today the thing is northwich was second and are now 30 points behind us they play tomorrow so we're going to play the game and then we're going to have to skip forward 24 hours to see if we win the title or not unfortunately we won't be able to celebrate the trophy, which is absolutely ridiculous. But swings and roundabouts, every silver lining, all of those scenarios, everything like that. Just forget it. doesn't matter. We'll, we'll see. Let's get straight on to the game anyway. Right, this is the starting formation today then, and it is Manny in goal. We've got Swanson, Laird, Honeyball at the back. We've got Carson at right who has taken the place of Rasmus Johansson in the last like 10 games or so. We've got Gary McCabe, Serrano and Cameron Park on the left-hand side. Then we've got McKeown and Thompson, and sandwiched in between those two at Swanson is our target man, Dan Effenu, who's back in the team. He actually has lost his place over the last like like 10 games, like Rasmus Johansson, and we've had... Sylvanese Van Blake with McKeown and Thompson. My assistant manager is also saying now McKeown is actually our best striker as well. But Lewis Thompson has scored 30 plus goals this season and hopefully he can fire us to a league title today. I'm just looking at their 4 4 2 formation and no one really jumps out. Is that Richie Allen? It is. You might know him from scoring a goal for Salford City a couple of years ago on the BBC in the FA Cup. Yeah. A bit of a Cruyff turn, curl it in the corner, you get the gist. Right, let's get straight on to the action though. Uh, go over to my assistant, he can give the team talk today and then I come in nice and calmly and say to the boys, I've got faith in you go out there and make the difference. Everyone is happy, everyone is motivated, we are ready to go. Right, first highlight comes to Longridge though and they've hit the bar. Ooh. But he's offside anyway, so it would not have counted. Things are very quiet today, actually. Um, I'm not going to lie, Ebanks Blake has turned into an absolute crucial signing for us because he is the thing that makes this team tick. So to lose him at this late stage for the rest of the season has been a bit of a, uh, yeah, a bit of a bummer. And we're going to be coming to the break here. And we haven't done anything in this match. We've actually, it looks like we're pulling out the worst performance of the season so far. As I've turned on the camera, it looks like the pressure is getting to the boys. A couple of more shots as we come to the end of the half, but Longridge have been the better team. And we haven't had a single highlight. So this is going to be a very quick episode if this stays as it is. Um, I'm going to come in there. I'm going to say to this point, of view, my assistant manager is also saying that they're disappointed as well. And we should get back out there and just go straight back at them. Well, we're coming up to the 60th minute now and absolutely nothing's happened in the second half. And I am going to make a change here. Yeah? I'm going to change things up. Well, as I say that, there is a highlight, and it's coming for their guys. So there might be a goal here, and it could be for Longridge. They've hit the post, they've hit the bar, and hit the post, and we've done absolutely nothing in this game. We're supposed to be champions. We're supposed to be top of the table, championies, and we're playing like rubbish. The ball is booted up the field. Can we get on that? No, we can't. That's the difference today. There's no second man. There's no second ball winning, and we haven't had a single highlight. So I'm going to pause the game. We're going into subs. Right, so these are the subs that I've decided to make. We've got Lewis Thompson, who's come off, who's on a 6.3. And we're going to bring on Callum Allison, who's actually making his debut today. And then we're also going to be taking off our left midfielder, Cameron Park, who's also not having the best game on a 6.4. We've moved Darren Carson over to the left-hand side, and Rasmus Johansson has come onto this pitch. He's still nil-nil. We can still go and win this game. I'm also going to tell us to, start, to just demand a little bit more, because we've done nothing. And as I've just shouted on to demand a bit more, we get our first real attack of the game. And it comes Rasmus Johansson. Can he go for the strike? He can. <laughs> he got it straight into the back of the net. And that could be that. We are a cut above everyone in this league this season. And we've got better and better as these youngsters have started to develop a little bit more. Uh, it could have been a foul there. But the ball there from Carson to Johansson. He's got all the time in the world to bring it out to his right boot. And he fires it into the back of the net. And it is 1-0 to Bury. And we are flying. Ball to the box by Mikion. There's Effen and he has it over the top of the bar. There's a highlight. 14 minutes to go now until the end of the game. 
Ball is booted forward. Laird wins the header and here comes McCabe now. McCabe's going forward. He puts the ball over the top for Tom McKeown. And McKeown, can he finish the game off? He can. It is 2-0 and it's game set and match. They just needed a little bit of a kick up the backside and say we can go and win this game. And we've gone and bloody done it. Fantastic stuff. McCabe then coming forward with the ball. Puts the ball over the top for McKeown. And McKeown is through and it's easy to beat the goalkeeper. He fires it into the bottom corner and that is that, ladies and gentlemen. No need to do any changes now until the end of the game. Can't see these getting back into it. And I can only see us going on winning the league. We are now, what is that, 16 points clear at the top of the table with 15 points. Well, I think there's still 18 points to play with. But if they do not get a victory tomorrow, Northwich, it will be game set and match. And Effen has just fired it against the Beans and Toast. And that is going to be the end of that, I think. And as we count down the seconds out, I think that will be that. I think the referee is about to blow. And he does, and we don't win the league just yet, but we might have it by tomorrow. And I think that's what we're just going to do, is we're going to skip straight there. But before that, we're going to tell the lads that they did a decent effort. So there's confirmation of the victory. And as like I said before, we are now many, 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 many points ahead. 16 points ahead. Uh, but Northwich have got that game in hand, which they're playing tomorrow. And if I just go down to... The fixtures, this is what it looks like. So we've got five games to go. So that's 15 points. We're 16 ahead at the minute. They fail to win tomorrow. We are champions. Let's skip straight to that. So here you go. It is Northwich. They're playing Bootle today. And can Bootle do us a job? Oh, and the answer is no. They can't do us a job. Very close though. 4-3 was the result of the match. And I think they went actually two goals up. They did. They actually went... Up to 3-2, I think, at one point. No, actually, they got down to 3-2. Wow, what a game of football that was. And then they scored in the 71st minute to make it 4-3. And they're just holding on by the nearest of grabs, grips, whatever you want to call it. But yes, they are holding on for dear life. But we are literally one victory away from now winning the title. And it will come in the next episode. And like I just mentioned before, if we do have a look at our schedule... We've got a fantastic episode on its way. We don't have to bring you any intro. We don't have to bring you any games now. It's just three games in a row. North Shields, Burst go in between to win the title. And then the second leg, North Shields for the FA Vars to take us to the title. To give us a cup and league double for this season. Can we get the first one in the bag, the first trophy uh, silverware in of the campaign of the club's history as well in the bag, in the trophy cabinet, and also secure our place in the FA Vars final? What an episode the next one's going to be, but I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I have. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up in the video underneath in the corner, just underneath this, you know what to do. If you are a new viewer to my videos, then please go over to my channel and press that subscribe button and then you will not miss a single episode that I uh, put out there and all the other football magic content that I've got out there as well you do not want to miss out on any of this and I would appreciate it massively big shout out to the lads over at Passion for FM for all their support this year with my videos if you want to be part of our football magic community then go and click on the links in the description below this video you know what to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back in a couple of days' time for another episode of Dead and Buried, the rise of AFC Buried.